How long we got? Two minutes? We're on. Are we on? Are we YouTube? are on. <laughs> we're on YouTube now. How do I get my life on here? <laughs> Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. You go in as a guest, so you don't want to be us. I'm not us. I'm a guest. I'm looking for a... Cool. Ah, that's us. Oh, it's my name. Okay, so we'll do the we'll do the theme tune to begin. I'm going back to where I belong. some sort of countdown so this is our first ever live so hi to everyone on instagram and hi to everybody on youtube thank you guys for joining us this evening it is a pleasure to get to meet all of you so looking forward to hearing your questions your comments yeah this is an interactive one so please please join in yeah we've got a lot going on here i'm just setting up guys youtube Oh, thank you, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Lemon Beach. Hi, you guys. Hi, Lemon Beach. Fantastic. I feel resort. like we're having a party. Reunion. I feel like we're having a one year, like, <laughs> reunion party. Because, guys, at Lemon Beach, we are well overdue a visit to you guys. Yeah, they're so awesome. The Lemon Beach Resort. Yes, we'll get, we'll get to all of that because we're doing a whole one year review we've been here as of yesterday one whole year so for those of you who may not know us hi Yehanan. hi i'm yabba i'm sam and we are ghana, ghana bound. bound wow look at that <laughs> all right yeah yeah so how we're gonna do it we're here to talk we're here to chat <laughs> above all else we're actually here to meet a lot of you we want to you know get interactive answer some of your questions and we've also made some points as well because others have asked ask questions obviously in the past through our Instagram through the YouTube so we thought this is a great opportunity to actually answer some of those questions and talk about maybe some of the things that we were passionate about now that we've been here for a year so we've got ours as well definitely I'm gonna be trying my best <laughs> to keep up with the comments so if I'm looking away I'm just looking at your comments guys I'm not disinterested anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's not there on his phone just no. like scrolling on Instagram so, yep. Hi, Hanan. Nice to see you. How you doing? Hanan in London. Woo -woo. Yeah, definitely reach out and let us know who's watching so we can say hi to you, shout you out as well. Joyce, how you doing, Joyce? Thank mm. you. I'm nervous underneath, but chilled on top. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first point um, we're going to chat about is... Sorry, I don't understand. Can you talk? Okay. How do I answer them? Ah, okay, so how do you answer the comments? Yeah. We're answering them here by talking. Ah, yeah, <laughs> okay, so, Hi, yeah. <laughs> so let's get into it. Okay, so how has it been living in Ghana for one year? First question, that's a bit of a deep question. First of all, it's um it's been a happy time. Definitely been a happy time. Um challenging. Um there have been a few events that we didn't see coming, like the passing of my mother, but that only highlighted what we were looking forward to, and that was the family coming around and doing their thing. Again, a funeral is a big, big deal here, and there's a lot of uh, cultural differences that yeah. we needed to get used to. Yeah. So that was um, another learning, learning um, leap. Mm -hmm. But um, challenging, if you, I still say, if you're not of a... Um, problem solving mindset don't do it <laughs> if you are um, you're going to enjoy the challenges and well you're going to face challenges and um, get through them it's going to just yeah you're in the Premier League for sure it's been a it's been a mixed bag and I think after about three months I thought yeah you know I've rested I'm I'm well and truly settled now that was a lie even now it's been a year I'm still feeling like I'm coming out of a blur of initially moving, settling the kids, settling ourselves. And you've got to remember, guys, we've been coming back and forth from Ghana for, since we were kids. So you'd think we'd be used to it by now. But finally settling here has been 
has been in yeah has been a challenge for sure and like i said to everybody who um, has asked me make sure you spend about six months just resting if you can if you're able to because <laughs> that's it takes at least six months to just recover from the initial shock of moving definitely i mean we thought we would have a soft landing into ghana because we had done so much yeah traveling to and from but um it is a real jolt from even spending six months here and trying to set up things um, to actually being in the system and um yeah this even after all of that set up we came we, like yeah was just said we've been coming as kids we came uh, and experienced ghana on our own and our own terms and bringing the family and landing yeah it is still this the, the, day to day there'll be challenges day to day yeah. i mean we guys we've not had water for three weeks in fact that's a small lie we didn't have water for three weeks and now it started trickling in <laughs> so, <laughs> we didn't realize which is a good which is a good point actually yeah. so yeah. the challenge the kind of things we say when we're talking about challenges are the creature comforts that we had let's say back in the uk yeah so constant running water we were used to so here we've not had water for three weeks we do have a water tank as you know one of our episodes was just about the water tank <laughs> and the water tank is huge what's the capacity actually that is i think it's ten thousand liters something yeah or so, eight thousand sorry eight thousand eight thousand liters so um every time the government gives water three three days a week the government gives water so every time that happens our tank fills and fills and fills and it's full so we don't really feel it when they're when those days they're not giving water happen however people who do not have a water tank have to literally wait for let's say a monday wednesday and a friday to actually collect water so i'm grateful for the tank however for some reason which i think you've discovered was hammer tam the government has held back releasing water so for three weeks <laughs> our tank had not been filling and one day like the ta the pump outside was making a funny noise and that was it the pump didn't work we had no water running to the house and i had a feeling the night before just a feeling to go and fill up this, these big buckets that we have so i filled one of them up so we were able to at least get on with it for a couple of days and get the plumber sorted and stuff and then um sam ordered water which cost 80 cities that's about 10 pounds to get how much of the tank filled well we had less than a quarter uh three quarters let's say yeah yeah, yeah there's a lot of water yeah, yeah it's a lot so those are the sort of things that we mean when we talk about challenges but we just get on with it don't we we learn we learn how to deal with it yeah yeah and um we'll come on to the house build later yeah but um yeah so we had thought we had things in preparation but then because we're so used to water coming and it refilling and topping up i hadn't been checking so i need to keep checking seen that level going down now i've discovered that we definitely do have a leak and that's in the old house not in the new obviously not in the new one but um yeah we'll get on to the house build later on in the yeah that'll the, be the, the, the last life. topic that we'll yeah. cover so stick yeah. around for that so for you what has been uh what was the most shocking thing the most shocking thing and i would say shocking and maybe disappointing was the the way i felt like the people are not overly looked after here that shocked me, I think. Being, you know, we're, we're meeting people every day on the Trotro, Uber, market, and the way people are struggling but not getting as much support is what shocked me the most, to be honest. Other things I've seen, you know, light off and things like that. But that one broke my heart a little bit. And every day I'm still trying to figure out how to, you know, yeah, how to maneuver that. But that was a shock. Yeah, for sure. Yeah yeah okay. yeah so um next one no carry on so should we get just, some questions no just over here hi guys to the motherland hey how you doing hi. we've got books and negus hi the adapting african kofi the little well little young 16 year old youngest youtuber from ghana <laughs> hi hi kof and who we got brown coat hey how you doing this evening guys so Branco is asking us, how are we doing? We're doing good, thank you. I'm slightly nervous. <laughs> it's uh, different filming compared to going live. And Joyce, hi. Hi, Joyce. You're awesome. Who we got over here? We've got Emma, Emma Harrington. Hi, Emma. Yeah. Hi, Em. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Destination Africa crew, thank you. 
for our first year anniversary. Congratulations. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So the next thing we're going to say is, have we considered going back, moving back to England? And why? Uh, why not? So have you at any point thought, oh, I just, yeah, I want to move back? Well, it's different for me because you've been here, been here. I don't know. We say it's the first anniversary or the first year anniversary. For me, I've been going and coming mm. safely with all COVID restrictions and all of that. <laughs> I've been following all the protocols. Don't come and kill me. All right. So, yeah, I've been going and coming. So it's not a full year for me. There's bits and pieces that I've had to do. And have I... You have For me, it's fleeting moments. And it will just be moments of frustration with the heat and something that's taken so long or disappointments. Those are the two things that can make you think that you want to go back. But having been back, I've seen not much has changed. Um, and it's not all doom and gloom, but not much has changed in that had made in, that had made up my mind for wanting to come over here. Mm. You see what I mean? Mm. So once going back, any you know sunny things that I think you know it's going to be great and you know it was amazing. I just see everything for what it is when yeah. I'm back and doing my business. And that again, I miss all my people over there. That one, hey, arms, Hanan, all of you crew, family. I miss you guys dearly. And yes. Um, those are the times where you want to go back and be around people that you know love you and care for you. Mm -hmm. But um, I can't wait to host all our friends over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah people are already saying they're going to come and visit, which is awesome. Whoop, hi, Sean from the States. <laughs> <laughs> um, have I considered going back? Um, never. Not at one point, no. <laughs> not once. So, yeah, not in the three, six, five days. So, let's see. Have we got any questions from the panel? No, we've got Miss Laurie one. And she remembers watching us on YouTube with Watamaya live. And we were planning to come. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I went yeah. on his live. Yes. And she says she's very proud of us. Thank you so much. Oh, that's really encouraging. Yeah. That is awesome. And then Arm says, miss you guys too. Yeah. Just talking about those guys. You know we miss you guys. And my little professor. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay. Missing family and close friends. Um, those moments then you really wish that you were over there but luckily for me I've gone over there and seen and had a few uh, few times with close friends what have we got here um, I think you'll get it here not yep there it is there's the question not next to, question please not to bring politics into this sorry so so, okay so Briggy says not to bring politics into this but how do you feel about this e-levy and how will you get money from abroad? Right. All right. So the e-levy, um, man, not to bring politics into this. <laughs> the the e-levy will affect absolutely everyone from the poorest market, from the poorest person to the, you know, international business dealer. Um, I don't think I'm in agreement. If you have a look at, at the bills, you get a bill from a hotel, a restaurant, from anywhere, the amount of levies that are taxed on everybody, um, I think there's got to be a better way of raising an income as a country than hammering. I mean, fuel, when we first came, was around just over five, just under five cities. It's gone to seven cities. Mm -hmm. Now, if we hit eight cities, that's a pound a litre. And a lot of you are saying, oh man, that's cheap in different countries. But over here, you've got to remember your earning capacity or capability for the everyday man is much, much lower. It's gotten to the point where how do you simply expect someone to buy fuel? What are they going to do? Cut their arms off and sell it. it, it I, I don't understand it. I'm still only a year in. Um, there must The government must be facing challenges in getting income and then using it because there's, there's a lot. That class of of um, of Ghana, I don't understand. I've got to be honest with you. And being in it and seeing what's going on, there's a lot that breaks my heart. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So next question is from Ado Sola. So hi Ado, what would you estimate you have to make per month to be comfortable as a family moving back to Ghana? I think that that is the key. 
yeah, being comfortable absolutely is the key. You don't want to move here just to come and struggle. Of course not. Um, this question is so relative, though, to the individual. So first of all, it's depending on the size of the family, um, what's your definition of comfortable? So are you wanting to stay at Kempinski and Royal Senshi regularly? Or are you happy going to a chop bar? Are you just happy to be able to live that kind of life? Um, it really does depend on you. And um, I would say, I mean, if we want to talk about numbers, I can't just throw out random numbers. Well, what we did, we sat down and put a dollar or a pound figure on the life we wanted to live and lead. Home health, nanny maybe, how many holidays you want to take, um, take in a year what the standard of living that you want put a dollar figure on that or a pound figure on that or whatever your local currency is and then it work, helps you work back what you will need to live comfortably it's what you need it's yeah, just like we get asked how much does it cost to build a house well yeah. you can pretty much um cost out a standard house standard rooms but how you want to furnish it can blow it through the roof mm. yep yeah excellent so that really helped us but sitting down and write down what you yeah. actually want for your life and so you know ghana is a wonderful place you can you have the wonderful opportunities to achieve that life that you want but it's got a, a figure attached to it so we're aspiring to reach that figure so um i don't make the point that he wants to or he or she wants to maintain a middle class lifestyle but again it's got to be relevant to you so ado i'd say sit down work out what it is you want and your what is your comfortable you can get a figure for that. Uh, you can find out, again, I don't know what your circumstances is, but if you want two cars, if you want three holidays a year. If you want a driver, a security guard. You can work that out and then you'll have your number. Everyone has their number. Yeah. 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 Woo, G-Cat's in the house. Hi, G-Cat. Oh, my gosh, G-Cat's original. G-Cat's original. She says she's from Wales. She's in Uganda, isn't she? Hold on. Hi, Atito. <laughs> Patience, Atito. See, I can see. She's you you her, know her, yes. She we actually, know you. for me, she needs to have the bubble around. <laughs> <laughs> the circle around to, uh -huh. to recognise her. So, um, we can continue reading. Okay. So, Sam's doing his job very well. So we're on to Instagram. Instagram Hi guys. crew. Hi arms. How you doing? Definitely miss you. So we had a question from. Go for it. Yep. After that, keep going. No, nope. that's it. Okay, so no questions from Instagram. So do you want to read that one? Uh, Brown coat blue says I think the e levy is a terrible idea. It's a flat tax, which always wreaks the most havoc on the poor and low income people. Starting at a hundred cities is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, that is that is like um yeah, it's every transaction. A hundred cities. What's a hundred cities in pounds? Twelve and pence? pounds. And this is twelve pounds. So anything over twelve pounds, you'll pay an extra one point three, one point one point something percent. Oh gosh. On each transaction, um, it's not gone through as far as I know. They're mm. still talking about it. Um they told us that they wouldn't be charging us for toll roads as a give back which makes no sense it's, it's not yeah, it's not going to work yeah it's ridiculous uh do you wish you had saved more money before you moved always good question let <laughs> good question yes of course but we there's no regrets because we did the best we could at the time and you know when you're waiting to save a certain amount or you're waiting to save as much as possible eventually you'll never move you'll just constantly be saving so we yeah. left at the point we thought you know what we could survive now let's go yeah but yeah of course as a as, as a family <laughs> we 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 decided to plan well save some money um always wish you saved more yeah um uh but we've met people here that have come and were either stuck because they couldn't get back because of the borders closing or literally came on a whim that were coming they, they were here and they've decided to stay here they've started businesses they didn't save a penny um like i said we have a family so we decided to um really plan before we got here but hey, there's all sorts you'll meet everything over here um the other thing that i really like we did have that thing at the beginning was what do you really what was the biggest shock the returnee community is tight they're awesome yeah and 
it's it's a it's a village within a village it's a tribe within a tribe yeah and i love all of my crew the destination africa crew all my guys that are up in kumasi ah it's the returnee and there's a spirit of um the people that are coming back that you can you really seem to have an affinity there's with. a spirit of unity about yeah. that and that's exactly what we need all of us to rise so it's wonderful to have met like-minded um so let so you asked us about um saving money and then you asked can i survive in ghana using credit cards please <laughs> Please You're do not. not. A financial consultant. I, I, I must make a disclaimer. I am not a financial dis, um, consultant, and this is purely just my reply to your question. I would not personally be relying on credit cards here in Ghana. I would say have a backup and a backup for your backup. Um, yes, and try before you leave anywhere and wherever you live in the world to get out of as much debt as possible, so you can have a nice strong foundation. Definitely. Um, should we go to one of the, you got another one? Yeah, there's a question to order. Oh, they're having a conversation. I love this in the comments. How does dual, how does taxes work in terms of dual citizenship? Do you pay double? It is um, different for different regions, okay? As far as I understand now, if you are working in Ghana or living in Ghana, they have pretty much the same rules as the United States of America where they tax their citizens wherever they are in the world making money i may be wrong but that's my 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 investigation so far yeah so it may well be different where you're at okay yeah and then uh someone asked how do you keep your fitness routine in ghana so briggy how do you keep your fitness routine in ghana looking great so do you mean our fitness business or do you mean our actual personal routine? I, I think you've just got a compliment that you're looking great. Oh, How thank you. you. <laughs> I thought <laughs> it was like... A, <laughs> no, no, no. You're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Midasipa. Oh, you know, we thank God. We thank God. <laughs> so so um, keeping fitness here for me, it's, it's what I do for a living. I'm a personal trainer. So I have that um, extra incentive um but mo mainly to answer your question i work from home but thank you yeah all right what have we got okay so back to our own list here so what has the healthcare been like hmm. well you've had um i think you put an episode out on your first uh yeah footprint into it with with b and the uh, her condition yeah yeah so the health no I, I never um posted that one remember Oops. so yes so um health healthcare in ghana so so far so good um we've had slightly mixed um experiences but overall i can say it's been good the teams have been great who've worked with us um it's been efficient so um we um, early days the kids were just in hospital because the, the new germs or whatever the new bacteria just got them and um, at some point we thought Benji had malaria, so we ended up in a clinic and um, our, our own clinic here, and they were amazing. They were so friendly, they were um, really attentive to him, and they did the blood test, got the results really quickly, treated him really quickly. It was not malaria. And at that point I'll just say none of us have had malaria in the, in the year, and may we not. Um, and then Beatrice was also in hospital for something else, the same thing, they treated her really well. In fact, she enjoyed her experience. Even though she had a cannula, she came out of there because the doctors were so friendly to her. Um, in terms of getting the right medication, not a problem. Pharmacy, great. So yeah, healthcare all in all has been um, has been good. Yeah. How about your experience? Because you've been in and out as well. Yeah. Um, you pay for everything. You need good health um, health insurance or just the cash to pay for all your your uh, medical needs your, your you know your prescriptions everything's paid for yeah um there is um uh, what do you call it national health insurance yeah which gives you discount on some things yeah gives you discounts on some things um but a good health insurance uh, policy will really help you out over here yeah um it's worth getting them over here they're considerably cheaper 
uh, but obviously you need to check what and what cover you get from each. They vary. You can get you get what you pay for over here. So do yeah. your research for sure. So have you got another question? Uh, ah, LET, thank you. Yes, everybody, please hit the like and share button on this. It helps the algorithm. Yes, please share away. Mm -hmm. I think the conversation is going to get a bit deep today. I've got a feeling, so definitely share. Okay, yeah. any other questions? No. Okay, no. so um, Destination Africa Group is asking, what are the things you miss since leaving the UK? So you've mentioned you. friends already yeah. and, and family. Yeah. Um, me too. Um, for me, I miss um, cheap soya milk. I miss cheap Weetabix. <laughs> I miss cheap um, non-bio laundry detergent. It's things yeah, like that. that's a really weird one, isn't it? It's so, so weird. Non-bio laundry detergent isn't a thing over here. It's not a thing. <laughs> it's not a thing. And we've got two members of our, of our family who just are so sensitive that if I use the normal or more to wash the clothes they'll get you know the rashes and stuff so non-bio is a must okay if you're shipping stuff guys non-bio please if you're using it as a family so that's what i miss um that's generally like if we're talking about you know day to day that's generally what i miss the most i think yeah how about you what do you miss apart from family and friends um what do I really miss? You know, this is a weird one. <laughs> this is a weird one. I miss, with my kink here, the sprats that we used to have in England. Because oh. they're different over here and the bones are sharp. <laughs> but over there... I know, it's still a Ghanaian dish. No, that's, that's, okay. the, that's the only Ghanaian dish that the fish I preferred over there than here. But it was what you're used to. It's what you're used yeah. to, isn't it? It's the yeah, palate. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the palate, for sure. <laughs> I, miss, um, I miss vegetables like broccoli and... Um, cauliflower like fresh strawberries. and s strawberries are like 18 pounds <laughs> here or something so yeah um, but things like that again that the palate has gotten used to but um, we came with the mentality that we have to get the children used to a new a new palate and ourselves as well so we're still on that journey that's taking a little bit of time but it will come it will come hi tippy toes hi Sarah yep she's just joined what are you yeah. thinking next since we've been yep. and then we've got another question here so, hi guys. So, hi, sweet bad. Mm -hmm. Where in the UK are you from? Ah, all right. If the accent hasn't given it away, London. I was born and raised North London, Camden. Mm -hmm. And um, then we probably, when we met each other, pretty much moved out to the sticks outside Peterborough. Tiny, tiny, tiny village. So, yeah. So, um, for me, I've grown up in Norfolk. So, that is where... I was raised most of my life. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Three so, things you wish you had known before coming here. I wish I'd known to keep cash on me more often, to keep cash on me. I'm always running out. It's such a cash system. Yeah. So I wish I'd known yeah. that because I've been, I've been stuck quite a few times. So uh, yeah, wish I'd known that. How about you? I wish I'd known to pack more patience there's certain things. Ghana will chill you out. You're not going to get five things done in a day, especially if there's a bank involved. Um, you need to lower your... Ex manage. Manage your... <laughs> yeah, not lower. Manage your expectations on just how much you can do in a day when you need to go out and engage with other systems because there will be a queue wherever it is and the systems are still... Even when they, even when you have an app, you will always have to go in to activate this, that, or the other, or sign a piece of paper because the app could probably do it, but we still have a thing where you still need to sign and a hand. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> also, I wish I'd known how hard it is to act to get some things. So this is going to be hard to explain, but you know how when you're in the US or the UK, you you want something, so you go on Amazon, you go on eBay. Drrr, you get it here it's really challenging to find things unless you know somebody who knows a place or who knows a shop so um but to be honest that's a work in progress i think we've we've learned a lot on the go yeah a lot has been learned on the go yeah i wish i'd known to pack and buy more white things so in the uk i used to wear a lot of 
black and gray and blue and you know dark weather cold weather sort of colors and be warned ghana there's a white event for everything for, for births <laughs> christenings yes. um deaths there's white parties that you know sundays new year there's white it's like we we love to celebrate light and color here so i wish i'd bought more white so that's a little tip for anyone out there who's thinking about packing our boy loves wheat evic so I wish I just bought more, <laughs> more wheat of it. You, you bought a lot. I bought a lot, but he's just demolished them. So yeah, yeah I wish I bought that. Yeah, but otherwise, um, I think we spent a lot of time researching. So there's not many, too many things we wished. So Arms has asked, schooling for the kids, how does it compare? This is a complicated one. Um, the kids, by the way, are absolutely loving the school. They're loving school and they're learning and they're just coming on leaps and bounds however i was quite shocked so we're not in a really extra expensive international school we're in quite a it's a good school um by Ghanaian standards it's quite expensive but um it's manageable for us um but okay he'll be a shock so they're learning english and our boy is learning the Lord's Prayer to learn English. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just English or religious studies. They're kind of mixed in, into one, which I found quite shocking um, for me. Um, caning has been banned in Ghana, but you'll go into certain schools and they'll say we're still a caning school. Regardless. Into, yeah, and even yeah. if they say we're not caning, they're walking around with the cane, and I'm thinking, yeah. are you using that thing on my child? Yeah, so we've had to go in and talk to talk to schools that we're involved with and say, that's not happening, and if there is any issues, come talk to us as parents, we'll deal with the children, we're not into the caning thing. Again, it's your preference, whatever you do is good for you. Um, so... The fact that it's illegal to doesn't seem to make any difference in the actual schools. And people have said um, it's because some parents actually are unhappy if the school doesn't discipline the child after there's been like, you know, a misbehavior or whatever. So the, the parents are encouraging the caning. So I've heard that as well from, from teachers and parents. So that was interesting. But but the response to our conversations with them has been very positive. Yeah, they've, so, they've yeah. responded. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like. yeah. Um, but when we when it comes down to learning, it's actually the old school. What Ahmed, what we call the old school way of teaching, um, three R's. It's it's an older school where we are. It's an older school's type of teaching. It's very very th th thorough. Um, but um, we have spent so many hours talking about home homeschooling, and it's going to happen at some point. And that's because. Um, as a parent, you're really responsible about what goes into your kids. Um, there's a lot of colonial hangovers that are still in the school system here that have long since gone, for better or for worse, in the UK system that we're, we, we know. Um, there isn't a Pan-African slant on anything in the school. We, that was quite a shock. That was thought. a shock. The whole Africa first or Ghana first or whatever, it's not there. It's more a colonial uh, chain track that they're running on. Or that we were saying that we've visited an awesome school that has even um, made me think that we might have to move yeah, away from where we are. The Spellmore Institute, guys. Spellmore Institute. The Spellmore Institute. Yeah. So um, they are, they're fantastic. And I visited them today. And they really are focusing on African history on um, financial literacy it's like pan-africanism and building up that strong community of confident children just like destination africa just like destination africa yes so that so things are happening here things yeah. are happening so don't be too concerned if you are if you are wondering about schools and homeschooling and things there's a lot of resources and connections and groups here and so far i found that more in the the returnees tribe than with established stuff that's here already yeah. so far it's only been a year, so if it's out there, let us know. We'll go and have a look and interview and put it out there. We really like sharing the um, this type of information on the platform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so shocks and... We've talked a lot about shocks, haven't we? I feel like yes, yes, we haven't yes. spent all year being shocked, have no, we? No, 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 no. 
I mean, it's still more chilled out here. The pace is chilled out here. Um, we've all been going through this whole global thing with the um, with the Rona and the COVID. The COVID and the Rona, it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. But um, it's not so highly ten. There's no so. It's not a high tension thing over here. You do what you're supposed to do and live your life. Not that we. I wasn't here during lockdown, the first lockdown here. We weren't here. We was in the UK and then moved just after. As soon as those borders were open, we were back. Um, but people are being sensible here. You wash your hands. There's wash. There's wash stations even at Chocho Chocho stations. There's, my sister was. She came to visit from the Netherlands and she was so surprised that you could wash your hands everywhere. It's like the hygiene precautions here are just so many. So um, I think which is a good practice in general. I feel like even when Rona decides to leave, people, please wash your hands. <laughs> like, mm. can we keep that going, please? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's been, so that's been cool. The stronger masks here. You'll wear a mask everywhere, sanitizer when you mm. walk into any place. Um, but they're open. These places are open. And it's not the first and the last thing you hear when you wake up in Ghana. Yeah, exactly. There's just okay. other stuff happening. L.E.T., what kind of uh, precautions do you take to prevent your family from contracting malaria? Malaria is one of the things that hinders me from coming because I'm older. Okay, another highly personal one. We did ask this before we um, we came. We uh, asked a, a um, fitness, uh, fitness, <laughs> a health professional, yeah. and was advised to take malaria tablets and keep taking them. We didn't do that. They, we asked the main question of, can you take malaria tablets forever? What's the evidence behind that being safe? And there's not really much evidence to support it or to back that you can take it long term. So as we've come here for you know a longer term experience, we decided, like you said... Not to keep taking them. I mean, I've still got the packets there, but that's me. Occasionally, <laughs> yeah. he like licks a tablet and feels like yeah. he's covered. <laughs> so. um, the funny thing is here... They've lived with malaria. Malaria here is, yeah, don't get me wrong, it's, a, it's, it's dangerous. It probably affects more people than corona over here. But there is ways of dealing with it, treating it. It's, I, know, I remember being in England and it was literally like, oh my gosh, someone got um, malaria and they're still alive. But over here, it's kind of more treated like a bad flu. You get it. There's treatment. Um, if you, if you, again, I said you have to have money to pay for your treatment. That's where I suppose it can get really hairy if you don't have the money for the treatments. That that can be. Yeah. yeah it, it's still malaria, you know. Yes, of course, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, like I said, we've not, you know, thank the Almighty, we've not had malaria. None of us um, yeah. ever actually. Now I've said, now I've thought that ever. Um, but in the year we've lived here, we've not had it. So precautions we do take, um, we use repellent. Yeah. I started, I wanted to go all natural and herbal. So I started with citronella oil. I felt like the mosquitoes were like, mm, seasoning. <laughs> 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 so that didn't work for me. Anyway, um, Benj, um, Sam and our daughter, the mosquitoes don't really seem to be attracted to them. But me and Benji, they love us. So I had to buy something stronger, which I didn't want to, but I have, and it worked which is like another repellent cream called Medisoft. So I use that generally at night and went before he goes to school. And that seems to have worked to stop us getting bitten. But I'm not going to lie. We've been stung <laughs> so much, so much. But, you know, amazing. We're still okay. Definitely. Okay, I think there was a... What kind of proportion? That's where you were doing. Seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so... <laughs> and uh, by the way, to the motherland, Naomi, you asked... Um, how the kids are finding it, living in Ghana, the kids love it. The kids are free, they're surrounded by family. Ghana is very child friendly. People are constantly helping you watch out for your children. If there seems to be a danger or a hole, they'll grab your child before you know you even see it. The children love it. Benji hates the mosquitoes. He said that Ghana is the only place that has mosquitoes in the world. <laughs> I said, that is not the case. But um, apart from that, they, they're loving it. The climate, I think, is, is a big part yeah. for them loving it yeah. because yeah. they are outside all the time on their bikes, in the sand and in the water. And they're able to do that because it's hot. It's 30 degrees in the day and it's 26 degrees at night. 
Every day. The building site is the BMX track. Yes, the building site is the BMX track now, yeah. Mountain bike track. For sure, (laughs) for sure. Okay, so there was another question just now. Yep. Okay. The the ones, I'm guessing, Uh, eye brown coat. Yeah. So I think he's saying the mosquitoes that mainly carry malaria are the night mosquitoes. It's not as bad of an issue as it seems. Just some oil re- or repellent around ankles, etc. Wear long, yes, long clothes yeah. at night. Yeah, That's that, another yeah. thing. Um, for parents out there, because I was packing shorts and all sorts, you know, obviously for them to sleep in. But um, we ended up buying long sleeve pajamas. It is, and because children are climatized quite quickly, they it, still gets cold. it still gets cold at night. But it also stops the mosquitoes, like Brown Coat just said, getting to us. So generally, yes, they will wear long sleeves at night as well. Cool. Um, what? So, hi, Afropolitan foodie from Instagram. What's the school like? What's the schools like? You can get every type of school here. So if you want a high-end, very um, English-orientated, French, German, Italian they're all here if you want a local school that's doing the local curriculum it's here you can get what you pay for there's a lot of signs for montessori schools however going to them they were kind of montessori ish i don't think they're actually true montessori from what i know but pretty much you can get any curriculum type of school but again you want to be near your school traffic's not a joke over here in accra Accra isn't everything. This is the other thing that um, that uh, I think I feel they need to come across. Accra isn't everything. Everything seems to be focused on Accra, Accra, Accra. There are other areas that are opening up, um, getting airports and a really, really good um, fresh land, you know, fresh territory to go through. Accra is, I mean, business is centered around Accra. That is the truth. But um depending on what you need you might want to see if there's anything outside of Accra if you're far into farming and especially you can find some really nice little communities um that would just be just perfect lovely yeah so I hope that answered your question as well about schools they are there are so many different types so what ex- I forgot question there yeah Bobcat Traction are we both Ghanians yes we Bobcat are Bobcat Traction are you both Ghanians yes we are Yes, we yes, are. Yes, we are both Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. Born in England. We're Ghanaians that happen to be born in England. There you go. That's yeah. the answer. Yeah. Sweet Bad says, what is the main problem with Montessori schools there? They're not pure Montessori. They put, they seem to either write Montessori on the front of the school and they're not doing any type of Montessori um, ethos or they're picking bits out and still caning. It's not Montessori. <laughs> it just doesn't yeah yeah that's you have what to it do is your research yeah you've got to do your research into the yeah. montessori yeah research beforehand for sure um percy newton says tema seems like a chilled accra yeah i i feel like that's the case too and tema is growing so big in yeah. fact tema has now joined spintex it's <laughs> like you know it's a tema has expanded but it's yeah slightly more affordable but still feels like it's a bit more of a chilled Tem- out. Temer's just short of Dodoa. It's like, what? Temer, Temer as an area, there's so many... Di- okay, so Temer has many different um, communities. And each community has a different energy. So you could be up in the 20s and it's really chilled. Or down in community one and you're right by the, the, the port. Mm. And it's busy and there's trucks flying through. So even saying that, Temer has a lot of different identities to it anyway, yeah. I feel. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So, Bobcat Traction, are there any online stores in Ghana that sells electronics? Good question. This is electronics and techno. This is a new thing. Well, I say it's a new thing. It's a new thing for us, and it's actually working. Yes, there are stores. There's Jumia. There's a few different stores that you can buy electronics on. Um, you can even buy, get your, your, your fast food delivered now. You can get pizzas delivered and it actually works. The last time I was here, 
and I tried that. It wasn't really yeah. working out right. Okay, so right what now. you're saying, electronics actually, you yeah, can yeah, get yeah, them yeah, delivered. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get them on. You can get it online. You can get it delivered. And there are a few um, ways of getting stuff from abroad delivered. So you can even get. Um, um, what are we talking about here? Not eBay. Go Amazon. Amazon stuff delivered. It costs a lot, but you can get that done. There are stuff. There is stuff out there. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to say hi to everyone on Instagram? So we've got Raula and Just Top seventy four joined. So hi. Oh, that's Justin Hopkins. I went to school with him. Oh, cool. Oh, <laughs> You're right, mate. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. So, please, have you got your certificate to build and? What building permit was given? Aish, even the word permit, <sighs> I'm like shaking. <laughs> uh, so I have to talk about this one. Now. Yes, Are you sure definitely. You don't want to talk about this one? No, we want to talk about it. All right, this is an episode that we are in the that's in the making, and we want to get it right. Everything that you will come across when you are buying land or building in Ghana, there's a lot, and if you don't know. It feels like you're just paying money to everybody for anything that they just they come up with. But there are there is there is a there is um, there is a path of how to do this. Yes, we did get a permit. The permit price changes. It depends on the size of your project. All right, and that is done at the local municipal offices. All right. When you go into these offices, the first place in place you want to go is to the physical construction office or the physical development office it will have that type of label go to that desk first don't go to any other desk they'll quite happily take your money for a whole permit and then send you backwards and yeah so there is a way but we'll, I, I am working on an episode and I'll do my best to get that out when I've got everything 100% then I can tell you so you have the local municipal stuff and then you have the chiefs and the stool land so every bit of land here will have a chief and it'll be under his control and they'll want money so the moment you put your pickaxe in the ground after having got your building permits they'll come and say well we need digging rights this is a new a new project and um you'll negotiate that one yeah. yes you'll definitely wait for that, that episode that, that is that is cultural that is not legal yeah yeah that's a cultural payment um, but I'll go into it in the episode. I'll go into that one. For sure. So, yes, we do have the build, building permit. It took longer because I was very stubborn with not wanting to fill brown envelopes. I'm saying it. He's so stubborn. Brown coat uh, said digging fee. Oh. Digging fee is different. <laughs> I'm talking about... So, you can pay... There's no... There's, I don't have a problem with paying to be express, expressly dealt with, having things pushed through quicker. I do have a problem with being penalised for not wanting to be express. To the point where they'll just leave your documents on the table and punish you for not going the express route. That's the problem I have. But an express payment? Hey, okay, get it done. <laughs> so, refined collection. Hi, Nadia. Um, I don't have a question. I just want to say hi, that I love you. No, I love, oh, I love you. I, I made that myself. She said, hmm? I want to say that I love what you guys do. Thank you. It's Nadia, Refined Collection. Ah, Nads. Cool, cool. Uh, what have we got here? Tonaton. Yes, Tonaton is another um, app that you can buy stuff on. It's a, that's, that's the closest to eBay out here, Tonaton. Uh, you can put stuff out there. Um, just be sure you um, get official stuff real things not counterfeit cool and then fix the social media it says it's not corruption it's tips <laughs> 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 they put all sorts of spicy names around what, what it really is <laughs> uh, no no i mean like honestly i'm not even being facetious here if there is a fee for express that dealing with stuff i would have a problem i like the choice but don't penalize me it's true for not taking that choice it's true brown is making me laugh today because he's like <laughs> it's express payment or oh you're still standing here 100 <laughs> percent. that's the one hey it's true it's true so someone then asked yep Someone asked, do you know where the most affordable locations to rent in Ghana with sorry, in Accra without having to take out a loan? This is such such a good Oof. question. And we, we talk about this all the time because the reality is, yes, there's plenty of affordable housing 
within Greater Accra. Is it in East Ligon, Sam? No chance. No. No chance. So, so what sort of areas? So you've got another great hot cake, Caswa, it's coming up. You can get stuff. You can get stuff in most areas. Look, if you were in Knightsbridge in it, or in Manhattan in New York, you know you're not getting cheap, cheap. It's just not that. So when you come here, it's the same thing. You can't expect to be in the top areas and get dirt cheap housing. You can you can get housing here for a thousand cities a month. You can get it for under a thousand cities a month. Would you feel comfortable in it is the question. Yeah. So it's not everything that's in dollars. There's the dollar market and there's the city market. It's now down to whether you are going to be comfortable in a chamber in a hall in the back of, in Caswa or in La Paz or, or you know, or any, there's so many places. Yeah. So it's how are you able to be comfortable in that? But is there affordable places to rent? Yes. Is it for you? That's a different question. Mm. Mm. That's such a good question. So you mentioned Caswa. Um, any other affordable areas you would say more affordable than, let's say, East Ligon? Literally every area is more affordable than East so, Ligon. <laughs> yeah, and then when you branch out towards like um, Dodowa or yeah. UB, that still counts as a cry, right? Yeah, yeah. So there are areas around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, had a, we had a question from Refined Collection. Have you guys been scammed and how do you tell the real things from the fake? Mm. Nice one. Have we been scammed? I, <laughs> some things feel like a scam, but it's, <laughs> but it's just like, well, like when you go to the market and then it's like you want to buy tomatoes and then they pause and they just, you know, they scan you like they've been outside, they've been abrochi and then suddenly there's a tax. I feel like that's a scam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that happens okay, every day. Yeah, yeah. So um, to answer your question, Refined Collection, I don't think we've been overtly, overtly scammed. scammed. Like um, like we've had phone calls from all sorts of different countries. Um, oh, oh, someone did ask me to, um, they accidentally sent me um, money on mobile money and they said, can I pay them back? So that was an almost scam. But I was like, You're that's so obvious. <laughs> You're so, out of luck. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no thank god okay here we go there's some more questions here waiting for that uh, okay we'll be waiting nice one brown coat yeah i'm working on that episode <laughs> do you know yep we've read that one okay. this one now for you. wow so samuel where where well you changed so much yeah. um wow you changed so much i couldn't recognize you until you started talking <laughs> who's that me I is don't know. Beard? Are you talking about Sam Samuel or are you talking about is me? Is it the beard? Is, is it, it the, the beard? beard maybe? What do you guys think about Sam's beard by the way? Mm. And um and yeah. Okay. All right, there was a question about that's the children. That's a good children. question. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, so fix the social media in insults. So fix, fix the social media insults says <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to check that out now. Uh please, did you seek your children's approval before moving? Ah. <laughs> So, I don't know, again, if you've seen some of the older episodes, as a child, Ghana was always uh, a threat to me. If I don't do well at school, you're going to go to Ghana. If I don't do this, you're going to go to Ghana. If I mess about, I'm going to go to Ghana. With my children, I took the opposite tact. If you do well, we're going to visit the family in Ghana. If you are really good, we can get a holiday in Ghana. By the time we got ready to go to Ghana, they couldn't wait. They couldn't wait. We've asked our kids, especially Benji, on numerous occasions, do you want to go back to, to England? He's our five-year-old. Yeah. He'll say, do I have any toys left in England? <laughs> no, you don't, Benji. Okay, then I'm okay. I don't need to go. He's but okay. We do, we do check in with yeah. him mainly regularly because she doesn't really know any different. But yeah. we do check with him regularly how he's doing. And, yeah, they, they love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you, Bobcat. Um, um, what did Bobcat say? He says, you guys are some of the best YouTubers around and very friendly, honest, hey, that's and, fast answer, reading. <laughs> and answer questions promptly. Oh, thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that means a lot. Wow. Um, yeah, it's important to be honest because you could say, oh, Ghana is a utopia and it's just back to Africa and everyone, my brothers and sisters, they all love me <laughs> and it's an amazing. But it's a bit harder than that. You get that? Yeah. But then, you know, there's a struggle going on here. So you have to be, you know. You have to be real with it. You have to be real and you have to be smart. 
Hi Vanessa Canby. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hi Vanessa, another let's inspiration. Wave. Give her yeah, a wave. Let's yeah, wave give her a wave. Come. Guys, please share this um this live for us. And um like, comment, subscribe if you haven't subbed. We are really gonna start working hard harder on a lot of stuff. We've got <laughs> interesting land and um housing stuff coming up that we're working on opportunities yeah. that other people that might want to return we're working on that for you guys um if you're looking for real good like electricians and stuff we've worked hard to curating hey vanessa curating a list of people that we've been working with before we've been here and working with here now and other uk returnees or returnees from the diaspora that are setting up shop here and would really want to work with you guys and making your return comfortable or even your holidays comfortable guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can we recommend any good shipping agents hmm we used we used a door-to-door -to, -door to get our stuff done it was jobico uh we've used them for so long the stuff gets here within five four to six weeks and it has every single time minimal breakages um but with shipping agents, if you DM us, we can talk about that. Yeah. So, next question. If I have a building question, should I wait on that for now? Um, I think you can go ahead and ask, because we're going to give the building update um, nearer the end. Yeah. So, yeah. if you've got a question about it, please ask. So We'll make sure we cover it. So, go for it, Brown Definitely. Coat. Um, please, have you spotted some business opportunities? If yes, can you please elaborate on them? Yes. Ghana, Africa is full. I say Africa because we did go over to Nigeria and come back, and it's the same. There's so many things. Everything's not finished here. So you can find solutions everywhere for different problems, and that's the thing. That's the main thing. Obviously, there's other things, like there's someone actually selling a block, block factory. Block factory is where they do the bricks for building. That's coming up in another episode. Someone's actually trying to get some money together to do another project so they're selling their block factory over here um, anything to do with building Africa Ghana is literally building as we speak you get here things are going up I bought a plot of land in one side of Accra I actually was going to go and do some farming there thinking that it's not going to be um, ready to build on I went back and there's a house in front of me there's houses beside me I couldn't do the farming that I was going to do it's quick. Developing. it's quick it's quick over here. So yeah, um, anything that's online, you've got to be a member, got to remember that um, data is expensive here, but solutions, finding solutions to problems. You come here, look around, work out where the need is, you're going to be onto a winner finding and looking for solutions. Yeah, yeah, that's Brown Coat's um, building question. Do you know anyone that is pouring monolithic concrete slabs for houses at this time where the entire foundation is just one solid piece of concrete yep so I wish just I read the question okay do you know anyone that is pouring monolithic concrete slabs for houses at this time where the entire foundation is just one solid piece of concrete yes they do that here i wish i had busby the builder in fact i'll get him back on um to to answer more of these specific questions but yes it's um it, i've seen it done many times over here okay especially on bigger builds yes and mm. um, this is from destination africa group hi ghana bound would you send your children back to the uk to go to secondary school or university why um maybe <laughs> maybe if there was if they have if they want to and maybe if there's a specializing university in, in, a top, in an area they were really passionate yeah, about maybe but it's a we, big world we have, we have east Lagoon university here i know i know in the world of the, of academics where you graduate from is a yeah. big is a big deal to them yeah but um there's a lot uh, uh, unless they want to know yeah i feel like would we send them no would they, if they requested to go we're not you know we wouldn't hold them back but one thing we've learned here is that it's a it's a big world so if they are if they do become academics for example then we'd be looking globally at where 
some of the you know best areas for their topic is. But yeah, it's but not something that we've really we have no absolutely zero plans to re, to re to put them back into the UK schooling system. Um, we're definitely looking at homeschooling. So if if you have that as a mindset that we're looking at homeschooling, then going into into the um, UK schooling system at a later yeah. date, unless it's really specific and needed for whatever the, the children want to do. Yeah, 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 for sure. What you got here? So sweet bad. Oh, unfortunately, I had a bad. Ex sweet bad had a bad experience with Jabico. They didn't turn up when they promised. So um, I ended up going with Sam and Maya Amia. I'm guessing you're talking about coming for collection, and you're right. Sometimes that can be a bit off. We were we were way out in the sticks, and I actually now, when I was drop, um, bringing stuff, apart from the major bulk load, I go off to Jobico and drop my stuff off at their at their um, warehouses. So yeah, I can understand if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, sorry had you had that experience. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I had that issue. If anyone else, if anyone knows any um, shipping companies that you've had great experiences with or that you recommend, sure, put them in the comments as well because it's a community, guys. So if someone asked if Jabico didn't work for someone, maybe others have got some ideas. Mm -hmm. Patient said, great question, Destination Africa. Yep, it was. Um... And okay, so fix the social media says how much does the tradesman building your house charge per day or contract? We did ours per day, and it was at the time. At the was, time, because it, it changes. No, so basically, round it's everything's going up in price. So basically, a labourer is about 80, 70 or eighty pound um, cities. Cities, cities a day, <laughs> and the mason is around a hundred cities a day. Um, that's pretty standard across the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you go out of a cry, it can change. Yeah. Yeah. And Percy Newton makes a really good point. So with the way the world is changing, uni wouldn't be as in demand. That's why we're te you know, we're really big on teaching our children um, financial literacy, um, also about business, and yeah, developing them that way. Um, obviously, if they want to do university and stuff, we wouldn't hold them <laughs> back. But it's a good point. Percy Newton, they'll use the metaverse, LOL. So I know it's a bit tongue in cheek, <laughs> but you'd actually be surprised how much the young people over here are utilizing um, uh, the internet and um, uh, digitizing the artwork that's going on over here. If you have a look at um, Doug over on the Family by Nature, he's got a whole thing going on where he's got artists they're doing digital artwork and selling it through there. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot going on digitally and over here. You'd be quite surprised. Metaverse. Uh, I don't know yet. Even I'm getting into that to understand it and where how you monetize it. But yeah, the, the, it is. It is actually awesome how much the youth are engaging with um, with the whole internet and the digital realm. For sure. So we want to say hi in Instagram to Jason King. And Prince Charles. Oh, <laughs> we have royals present. Hi, <laughs> Prince Charles. Um, how much does the tradesman so build in your that. house? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's there's ways of working your contract with them. So we did a daily rate um, that worked best for us. For yeah. This build. Cool. So expectations versus reality. Go for it. What was your expectations versus the reality? My expectation was that I was going to come to Ghana and get my deeply rooted African spiritual, like, yes, this is Africa, you know, experience. What I came to find was that um, the, I was, how do I put it? I was expecting to learn about my African history um, here. And what I, the reality was, is that people didn't know to even teach me it. So the colonial mindset, unfortunately, was still a bit there, more than I expected. I thought things had moved on. That was my expectation. Okay, okay. Expectations versus... Yeah, I thought that the... Um... 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Let's fix the social again. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, no, we'll get gonna, to that you're question. You're going to take that one. You're going to take all of that question. So, there. Um, so expectations. expectations versus reality. Yeah. Um, again, it's a bit of a soft landing for us. We've been in and out. The reality, I wasn't expected to be so frustrated by different situations as I as I am. I'm still trying mm. to bring that down. Um, and the frustrations I'm talking about are things that are slowing down Ghana that they don't have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That those types of things I'm really trying to swallow because you I, mean, I can only affect what's going on around me and what I can do and me and my family can do. I can't be the whole change. Do you feel empowered or disempowered by how things have been here? I can feel how people I can understand and feel how people feel disempowered. I get it. Um and it's my relationship with corruption isn't what I thought isn't isn't annoying in the way that I thought it would be annoying. Mm. Yes, it's annoying to be paying more, but it's attitude or it kind of permeates through an attitude. And when you talk to the elders over here, aunties and grandmas, saying Ghana didn't used to be like this, mm. it's harder to do the right thing than the wrong thing in Ghana. Mm. I've heard that that um that line said a few times. Mm. And that's because of a corruption that's now in everything, not in everything, but in, in it, there seems to be a, a tolerable level. So the behavior of a trotter driver not pulling into his, and the driving, you know, just driving, there's a, there's a, there's a, yeah, literally like a tolerable acceptance of, ah, but the people at the top are not doing their thing. So I can do my thing. And if they're, if it's just a small start and then small city should seal, seal this problem. Yeah. But then it it's all the little, little, little bits that make a bigger mess, yeah. if you get what I mean. Yeah. I don't really want to be all negative. So it's not like... It's not all negative. I think it's just real. And I think yeah. it's... We're losing you from Instagram. Oh. <laughs> it's, I think um, that's the difficulty sometimes when we, when we film our episodes is we don't want to put out a negative perception because... The media has done that all over the years yeah. for us. You know, yeah. they put out an overly negative. It's it's, it's it's mostly lies. So we're quite conscious of that. But we're also making sure that we're being as honest as we can with our own experiences. And I feel like we have to. We have a responsibility to. So it's a fair comment. Yeah. 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 It's a fair comment. Oh. So um, Fix the Social Media says, Sam, you look more gentle when you, when you are shaved. Did your wife approve your beard? <laughs> <laughs> so why did you grow your beard i grew my beard because my skin was just going on a mad one and reading up on it there's just like look stop shaving close shave and then all this whole stuff is going to go off i grew it got rid of that and i had every intention of taking it off but someone said i like it so yeah it could still go but she said she likes it. Sam's auntie was like, what is that on your face? Because <laughs> Yabba know about this. <laughs> Yabba doesn't like it. <laughs> she said Yabba doesn't like it. <laughs> so auntie, please forgive me, but I like it. Okay, good. So um, you, you read that one? Which one? Or should I, okay. You proud of moving to Africa? So why not put your children into African rooted schools? <laughs> Please, when you find one that is not six hours on a trotro or three hours in a car away, I beg. So who did this one? Tell me. Ah, fix the school, uh, fix the social media. Look, that was the first thing. I expected to come here and find all sorts of Saturday schools like we knew um, that are deeply, uh, you know, into producing leaders of tomorrow. Okay. I thought that I would be able to find Pan-African schools, Pan-African secondary school. It wasn't here. Couldn't find it. Like, we're excited today because we've met the first one. Destination Africa is our Saturday school. They do, as they say on the can, they are making leaders of tomorrow. They, they talk, of, they, they're with our children. <laughs> Put your hands by your side, look up. Be proud, yeah. field questions, yeah. think about your answers. There is another school actually as well, yeah. Amy Adeleke. So yes. I don't know if, if Naomi or to the motherland, can you write down in the comments your please, links, Amy's, please. Amy's school as well, because I always forget the name, but that's another school that is like, yes, we can recommend. So please, if you're there, please write it down for us. So yes, 
we, we would we, love yeah, to. We're actively looking at it. And like I said earlier, uh, it, it was a bit off the cuff, but yeah, we would have to move closer to it or go into the network of homeschooled. And then we have a network here, a homeschooling network where you can plug into and yeah, you do it as an adult, as a parent, you take control over that and, and deliver that for your children. Absolutely. Yeah. So Destination Africa group says, what is it like getting about on a day-to-day -day basis speaking or not the local language? And how would you rate your progress over the past year? So this is a really good question, actually, because um, we need to do an update on the language. On the language Yaba progress. is just doing, she's killing it. She's doing so well. <laughs> Thank Me, you. I have to just brush up. So why do you think, why do you think you've not been? Because you can get around with English. Is it simple, is it as simple yeah, as that? You can get around with English, especially in Accra, you can do that. But the level of understanding can bring you frustrations because the speech patterns are different. So you'll change the way you speak, even in English, for someone to understand. <laughs> okay, the speech patterns, so patterns are examples. different. Yep, yep, there's so many examples. So you, I'm, I have to do much better. Yaba, she is doing amazing. I'm so proud of her. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it's, it's knowing your why, like you always say. Yeah. It's why am I doing it? For me, um, it's a, a, for both of us, it's so important that the children get the languages back. But if we're not speaking them and actively practicing regularly, daily at home, it's going to take a long time for them to get it. So I'm trying to learn like the, like the street tree more than the, as, as well as the um, taught book one, tree. the yeah. book one, so that we can just speak it into the day's the day-to-day -day, um, routine of the kids yeah so um, i'm finding that over the year to answer your question da over the year it has gotten easier my confidence has come up with it um but i keep falling into english because when i get passionate about a conversation that we have which destination africa knows we get passionate and i can't express it in treaty yeah, or yeah, fancy yeah, or yeah. ewe or ga and you were received differently and aren't I'm, you? I'm received differently yeah. and it's the same way when someone wants to express it in an in tree they can't, they can't express it as well in english and i want to be all tree speaking so at some point i just have to delve in but that will take time and we're being patient with it that will take time um yeah i just lost my point trying to read it <laughs> that's fine a comment. um arm says dinner has just been put on the table guys love you love what you're doing right, like yeah. you're saying love you love what you are doing Thanks, arms. Enjoy dinner. I always call you when Hi, dinner Jody. is about to get served, arms. What do you mean? That's what I do. <laughs> Jody's in the house. Hey, Jody. This is weird. So, oh. I will also say you can some. Hey, brown coat. Everyone's liking your beard, though. I will also say you can sometimes get more def def deference. Sorry, my English has gone deference. Let me do my Ghana deference <laughs> in Ghana. While you have a beard, you seem older. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty much why I wanted to shave it off because I I, I got grays when I was in my twenties. Yeah, so I, I think it I think it looks great though. But plus, and when you're older, you get more respect here. So go with it, go with it. Um, Just followed you on Insta. Yeah, please yay, do. Please follow us on Instagram, Ghana dot bound. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the like, and share this video. It'd be really really good for the algorithm. Um, do you want to give that one? Fix the social media insults. Please have check land situation in every area and what are the average prices per plot or acre? Okay. Um, every, it's um, a lot of land has been sold there. There's not much going in every, as far as I've been told through my guys. I don't know the average price of a plot there. I don't even know what sizes they're doing there. Um, right now, the average plot should be 100 by 70 feet. Yeah, feet. 100 by 70 or 70 by 100. Um, but now you're getting people chopping stuff up real small and it's still selling. Land, now you buy it, you don't sell it on. You do a rental, you put something on it it's it's a hot case it's going land it's is going, going, going quickly here guys yeah. it's it's serious so i mean you can get quarter plots now as well so it's it's much more affordable as well you can have an entry point mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um let's see. but i can look that up for you <laughs> and dm me we can work it out find out what's going on and what what should be about right 
Jodie says she likes the beard and you look slimmer. I oh. look slimmer, yes. Because he, he's lost a lot of weight. Yeah, I've lost about 10 kgs already. So why do you think, or do you think it's, that's got to do with moving to Ghana, that you lost weight? Yeah, because I don't, I don't, I don't like the crisps here. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't eat as much There's as the snacks. There's walkers out here for me. The snacks are like, <laughs> like the, the Ghanaian snacks are nice, but the things we're used to, like the crisps here, they're yeah. so full of E numbers and so many products. Yeah. We just don't, yeah. So and the heat, snack. I just don't eat so much in the heat either. Um, I'm just, yeah. So next phase is getting back on the exercise, like hardcore. And we're above that body. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think weight loss is something a lot of people um, yeah. say that that happens when they first move to Ghana. So it'll be interesting. Any of you who've moved, did you find that you lost weight, or did the fufu banku and kenke, you know, chunk you up a bit when you mm -hmm. first moved? Ah, that's what I was going to say. In reply to Destination Africa moving and getting a on getting around on a day to day basis, I am using the chochos a lot more. I, I was not averse to using them, but I had the car, and it's easy to just jump in it. Um, but in and around Accra, I find myself using the trotchos more. Um, but if it's a real long one, I have to have a front seat because just the size, the, the amount of chairs that they try and fit into one bus is more chairs than supposed to be for the size. So either your knees are smashing or your back smashing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But using the local stuff, I'm loving that. Benji's actually correcting me. We're having some funny stuff in, in the house now with Benji's dad. You don't answer like that, Daddy. <laughs> yes, I've told the kids yeah. when they say please and thank you, there's no more please and thank you. They say me paucho, or they say me cuckoo, or they say oh, fine, eh? um, or they say the thank you. So we, we're trying to eradicate the English in certain parts because it's, they've got it, they can speak English. So we're trying to get them to practice the speech. Yeah. So thanks for Destination Africa Group for that one. Brown coat blue. When I had my beard, people were less pushy, etc. <laughs> it was very noticeable. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed that. And the, the, the thing I've noticed, I'm getting called daddy more. It's like, oh, Lord, it's the grey. <laughs> I'll go back to uncle. That was OK. But no, it's, oh, daddy, oh, daddy. How are you doing? Oh, come this way. Like, ah, I'm not in the grave. Come oh, on. It's true. <laughs> Another thing that I, it took me getting used to was being called madame and mummy. It's like that was weird, but it's normal now. Auntie, Madame, Mummy, you know, it's just it's just how we how we do here. Can plant based foods be purchased in Ghana? Yes, you can get plant based foods. You yep. have vegan spots. There's a lot of this. This is here. It's here now. Yeah. It's it's well established here. Um, I think a good person to speak to about that would be um, Precious Hannah. She went on a vegan journey here in Ghana. So um, if you go to Precious Hannah on YouTube, she also talks about that. So you might get some ideas of places um, where you can eat in restaurants and also places where you can buy plant-based or meat replacement products. Ooh, a good question here. Has the, man, the vaccine mandate been dropped, sweet or bad? Um, the last update that I read was that you will no longer be required to be vaccinated hear, hear this but you will be offered a vaccine this is for Ghanaians returning you'll be offered a vaccine if you decline the vaccine you will then have to isolate at your own cost at a selected destination by by yeah at one of their facilities at your own cost and then test negative uh, but i don't know the time period Brown that, Coat says yes it's dropped but okay. you just said as far as we know as far as we know yeah. that was last week so they said it's dropped um so i think that you don't have to be vaccinated however when you do get here they will ask you to vaccinate um and in the it was in the, it was one of the official letters that came up that's what i'm, I'm coming back from you will be asked to vaccinate at the airport. If you don't, you will then have to quarantine at your expense in one of their facilities. Hmm. Eesh, that one. That's one. That was a shock. For those of you who are outside who wanted to come and visit, how did you feel about that? Did it affect your, your um, moving to Ghana plans? Yeah, how did it affect you? It'd be good to hear in the comments there. Definitely. What yeah. we got here. Okay, so um, someone asked, how was the building permit process? But I think we've spoken about that, haven't we? Yeah, and um, we're going to do some 
more in-depth stuff on the building permit process. Yeah. Bit, but yeah. Okay. We'll soon. We'll soon. Because we've been talking now for oh an hour and twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're still going. We're still got. In fact, this is like Ghana time. Everyone's questions is coming now. So we'll carry on. But we are going to do a, um, a build update for you guys in this chat as well. <laughs> so yeah, but how how, how are, are your life <laughs> your livestock doing? And is it a long is it a long time you ah. It's a long yeah, time you've premiered a video on them. Oh How's my, your goats? Oh my gosh, I've turned into a goat herder lady. <laughs> I'm like a goat woman. I, I feel like I've been connected with these animals. So, <laughs> so okay, one of them has gone to a new um, home. To a, to a new home. Is that how we're doing it? No, yeah. The first one. Which one? The, the, the black goat, the big one, the brother. Oh, oh okay. Okay, so one's gone. Um, one another one is pregnant again so they're doing fine actually um i know someone said to me because um our local, our local community basically are helping us raise these goats because they said spiritually they need to take care of the animals on their land like that they're living in or working on or near so it's been really awesome having everyone else helping us feed these animals as well as well as your cousin who actually sends food over mm -hmm. as well <laughs> that food alone they wouldn't be with us it's anyway, true um to, so, be, to be honest with you guys i'll be 100 percent. okay i did not come here um, prepared to look after animals it's been a little bit stressful at times when i felt like they were hungry and i didn't know where to go for food um so at some point they will be going um the chickens as well because the chickens attract roosters and you know me and my roosters. You remember the ka -ka video? <laughs> yes, there are more roosters who are back at four a.m. now. So we need to just—we're just not ready for animals. They're, they're going home. But they're finding a new. They're home. finding a new home. Let's just leave they're that. Finding at that, a new we? home. They'll be safe. It's yes. going to be a nice retirement goat village. Yes, and then we'll, <laughs> with my cousin. They're yes. going. They're, he's taking them and looking after them. Yeah, and then they'll be in a better place. And um, then we're hoping to get a guard dog. All three. All three, because Sam's just saying yes to all of the dogs right now. So we've got some puppies who are just growing a little bit for us, and then we'll be having some dogs. So watch watch out for that. My first time ever having dogs. <laughs> My gosh, this is going to be interesting. Are there, sorry, redefined collections. Are there any libraries there? Just curious. Yes, plenty. Plenty? Well, we saw that big library at Ridge. Okay, that's one option. Okay, three. that's not plenty. I shouldn't mm -hmm. have said plenty. That was misleading, and I apologise. But I saw Ridge, um, there was, it's actually, um, I've seen a video on one that's just about African books. I've got to find out where. So there are libraries, there are libraries. Is there a main one? A main Ghana library? It's a good question. Library services, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that's a good I've question. Seen I'm that actually, library. I've seen a, another library, but I don't. I saw like, and there's on, on Spintex Road, there's, a, there's like a Christian library books, but I haven't. It's not really for me, so I haven't gone in there. Okay, so next question, please. Did you fly to Nigeria or travel by road? We flew. It was, how long was that? 45 minutes? 45 minutes or so, yeah. Fantastic. Straight up, straight back down. Awesome. Yeah. So are the borders open to go to drive to Nigeria? I can't answer that because I'm not 100% sure. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, as, as I, the, again, this is way old now. I thought that the, the land borders are closed officially, but I don't know now. If anyone does know, Please. Let's, let's share the info. Yeah, well. let us know. Let's share it amongst ourselves as well. So, um, the Ghana Library Board, there you go. So, that answers your question there as well. And then there's another question. Can you please advise, is it cheaper to buy household goods in ghana or ship them out from the west such a good question let's talk about quality goods quality okay so we have obviously started looking at things um, we didn't ship a lot of household items we've shipped a sofa um and the quality items i would say ship it ship your quality items from outside and that includes things like tiles as well all the way to curtains i know there are nice tiles here there's starting to be more but don't forget it's also the quality you're looking for i hate saying that because i feel like i want to say 
yes, you can get everything quality here, but a lot of stuff we get has been imported cheaply anyway. Yeah. Um, you will pay over the odds for mediocre quality and you'll pay even more for good quality over here. So yeah, it's pretty much worth shipping over. If you've got a container coming over anyway, ship over your good stuff. I wouldn't ship over any rubbish. I'd ship over new stuff. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Okay. And um, to answer the question again, fix the social media insults has let us know. The main library is near the Bank of Ghana in a car central. Thank, Thank you so you. much, because I might do a video there. That's really good to know. Thank you. Brown Coat says, the vaccine only, the vaccine is only optional for Ghanaian citizens or legal residents. Okay. So are you saying that if you are from abroad, you must be vaccinated before you can come in? Is that what it is? Because I just didn't read that part or yeah. see that part addressed in the um, last update. I feel like we have to do a, yeah. some research, but it, ch it changes all the time, doesn't yeah. it? Okay. There are um, lots of libraries in all the universities yeah. around. Okay, that's good to know too. So Thank lots you. of libraries and all the universities around. Good. Awesome. So shall we get to the building update? Or do you want any of these other ones? I think building update. We'll Let's talk do about it. That. The building update. Where are we at? Let's do it. For our building, we are up to putting a roof on. So we've done everything else. We've had all the permits. The guys have come and done a check. That was an interesting episode. Um, and we're all good right now. We're pausing as we uh, regroup to get some money in to put the roof on. We've got some quotes. We've got about four different quotes. Um, uh, about four different quotes. And after the next batch of money comes in, we'll take off again and keep moving yeah. on the build. That's the reality. Yeah. Um, for when you're building here there are times for some people where you have to pause work hard again and get the money in that's something again we're honest about mm. and it's and it's being patient in that waiting time so right now we're very grateful that we can live in this bungalow while we while we're holding off for other people it may mean you're renting for that little bit longer or you're staying with family for that little bit longer but manage your expectations there yeah. may be a period of time where you're just standing still so that's our period of time and yeah. sometimes it can be frustrating but really really we've just accepted when when the money's there we move on and we carry on yeah it's actually quite frustrating fixing bits in the old house because the old house um is having its issues we've got like a leak that we've just had to, well we're still trying to find which is costing us water every day and you don't really want to throw money at the old building while you've got so much stuff that you want to do on the new building mm. but um uh we had the small bricks. I don't know if you if you were following again. We had the yeah. small bricks. We were supposed to use a lactrite brick that would keep the house cooler, um, that would cost less, and um, would take would be a much quicker time to do. All of those things were over promised and under delivered. Called it a day. Asked that contractor to leave. He was a very nice person, but his team would arrive late the building materials were not as suggested so maybe did we get ripped off yeah that one felt like a, a little scam yeah. like a rip-off it felt like a complete rip-off let's just be honest about it really it was one of the most stressful times around the build yeah there were a lot of promises made that just were not delivered on so um, we took the risk i shouldn't even say risk we went with that choice yeah it didn't work out but we're very yeah. grateful for our, um, for our builder, Busby, whose team managed to at least rectify the front so it doesn't look like a half-finished job. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so, so, yeah, and we didn't pay all the money for whatever. We paid for the materials. Um, it, it, we, we caught it in time, but it still was, again, we, wanted, we had wanted so much from that and we didn't get anything. Oh, that was so disappointing. Yeah, that was that really was disappointing. Really... And again, he was a really nice guy, but it just didn't work we didn't get what we were paying for no so that one was a no so we'll um hi everyone who's just come but we're going to stick with the the building update project yeah. right now but welcome all of you who've just joined um no you have not but yes you are late to the live i mean erradi <laughs> uh, yeah an hour and a half <laughs> ah Ghana time ah, that's, but, that's just on time but yes time. Ja, yes just you are absolutely on time still and um 
we'll keep this episode going after this. You can watch the whole thing. Yeah, so what we're doing next is we've done the first fit for the plumbing. We're doing the first fit and running the, um, the conduit for the electrics and the internet stuff. Um, that will be going on hopefully within the next month. Um, but the main, the next big milestone is getting that roof on. That's where we need to do, or we, we need to get to. Yeah, especially as we are still in the dry season, it's best we do it now than when the rainy season starts to yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are pushing to get it done. Also, now's the right time to do a borehole. So I'm looking into that as well. So you always do your boreholes in the dry season. So when you uh -huh. find water in the dry season, you'll definitely have water all year round. You don't do know. it in the wet rainy season okay yeah. good to know yeah what else awesome. on, the build? on the build what else so we've had um the electrician in i think have you mentioned that so he's marked where all the ac is going to go yeah that's the first fit. that's the first yeah, bit yeah, yeah. um and that's it really it's getting, quotes, it? quotes, it's getting quotes, quotes. quotes we've had the roof quote so that's it we're, while we're being patient we're doing as much as we can we're researching prices are going up every day but when the time comes it comes right Definitely. Okay, cool. Was it expensive for you to ship out your personal belongings? I think it might or saw oh I think I might have saw the video, but I'm curious about what kind of price you guys paid thanks. You're the you you're probably gonna remember that price. You've written everything down. Yeah. Oh I can't remember off the top of my head how much it all I know is when I look at those boxes that you guys would have seen on our video, I just think about £2,000. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. We threw away a lot. It was um, about £2,000. We threw away a lot. Some of it I really wished I hadn't thrown away. It was useful stuff, but I thought, nah, come on, are you really going to take that? And actually, yeah, I should have taken like what? stuff. Do the one we talked about the other day, the leaf blower. Yeah, the leaf, the leaf blower. Yeah, yeah. It's really useful. Could have used that. Yep, the Hoover. Just threw it out. Because by saying, at least someone might yeah. say, actually, I wouldn't yeah. didn't think about that. Yeah. Hoover and leaf blowers. We have such a big yard. These leaves, just, just doing. I had it and I threw it out. Would have bought it. Fill the box. Don't worry, we'll, get another, no, we'll get another one. We'll get. No, we'll get another one because it's a necessity. Yeah. A Hoover. Um, even though we've got tiles, um, we did have a rug, but I've thrown it out because the hammer tan did my head in. And with this house, we've got the, I don't know if you can see, we've got the slats and we haven't got AC yet. So the dust, so, I, so the Hoover would have been so useful for like in the sofa, um, even like in the cupboards and things. So if you are thinking of shipping a Hoover, do it, do it, please. Okay, let's go here. Where am I at? Questions, questions. Da, 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 da. I think you have to go up quite high because a lot of people have just joined. Okay. Everyone's doing the Ghana thing. So Katie A B, welcome, welcome. Um, oh Cheryl, hi Cheryl, hi. Uh, Cheryl talks Africa. You have to check out her YouTube as well. She's got a great YouTube channel. So good evening uh -huh. to you too. Yeah, but please, we need more of the expat interviews. It's really educative and more inspirational. Oh, that's right? that's, that's really awesome good enough. to know. Thank you, Fix the Social. Um. Okay, guys, if you want more interviews, I have actually got um, loads lined up, but I'm having a little change up with the type of episodes I'm doing, and then I'm going to go back to the interviews, because there are so many people I'm meeting who have amazing stories. So thank you for the encouragement. I will get more to you. All right. Can you recommend a good school for secondary and primary? The so thing around schools is wherever you are, um, it's got, you need to look for the best thing or the most suitable thing from re where you are. Uh, or if you're coming, look for housing around the school that you want to attend. You see what I mean? Yes. So yeah. live yeah. close to your school as much live as you can. Live close to your school because the traffic and getting there. Some some of these kids are, get, are waking up at 4 and 5 a.m. to get ready to yeah. get onto the vehicles to go to an awesome school miles away and then doing that on the way back. It, it'll take a lot out of the kids. Yeah. So as goes by recommendation, there's so many. So the, um, Spell, the Spellmore Institute in Pukwasi, I can highly recommend. Mm -hmm. Again, please, Naomi, write down this, um, um, Amy's school. If don't worry, otherwise I will put it in our episode or on our um, on our YouTube or um, Instagram later and, on. And while Destination Africa isn't a school, 
Um, their whole um, syllabus and program is awesome for building yeah. the young leaders of tomorrow. Yeah, and technically they are a school. Yeah. It's um, Saturday and Wednesday. Yeah, Saturday school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have an online uh, syllabus as well. So yes. you can get your kids started from before they even touch down. Yeah. I can't speak highly enough for Destination Africa. They are awesome. So definitely check them out. Um, sometime back, I saw something about the government starting back up a fired brick factory are they readily available yet uh, i don't know i haven't i haven't um i haven't heard of that yeah i'll okay. take a look um janet at japong asked as well can you advise on schools so hopefully our answer helped you um maybe we'll do another schools episode huh? i think i think it looks like a lot of you want to know about schools so an update we'll That's get okay. we'll get a schools update done for you hi katie a b she says, I just came on and missed what you said about homeschooling. So sorry. If you already mentioned this, but would you say there is currently a community of home ed families in or around the East Ligon area? Absolutely, yes. 100%. There is a well big established. community. Yeah. Well-established home education community in, in fact, um, we um, get in touch with Destination Africa Group. They can absolutely start you off on that journey. Um, you can get them in on Instagram or YouTube definitely how many boxes did we ship uh, oh i counted them Eesh, i have to re-watch my video six i can't remember is the answer <laughs> please, please go and watch the video <laughs> and come back and tell me what <laughs> don't watch it now stay here stay here um i can't remember sorry but we will we'll tell you moving you're moving to ghana this year with two young children yay congratulations i'm so looking to connect with other like-minded families well you are in the right place there yeah, is definitely absolutely. a good returnee community over here guys definitely yeah and everyone's looking to connect with each other so katie we are is it katie said it yeah, yeah we are absolutely excited for you to come and join and don't forget as well we've got our consultancy so if there are any questions or you need guidance on anything let us know we are here for you sweet bird how much is a bag of cement right now this price is moving every single blinking day. Last time you um, saw it. Last time I saw it, 40... 46. Okay, I, hey, I, was, I saw 44 so already. No, 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 no. Maybe it was 44. Let's say around 44. Yeah. Again, it changes daily. But because we've stopped... 44 Ghana cities. Yeah, because we've stopped that, that phase now of our build, I haven't. I'm actually going to have to go and get some cement tomorrow. So I'll, um, maybe I'll leave a note. Yeah look up on the community unless right. someone knows the exact yeah. if someone knows what it is today please write it drop down it in the comments ah Sherelle says she's got a hoover for us <laughs> please let's talk after tell us how much we'll come to a deal <laughs> she's got a hoover um, henry as well sam loves the henry's oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. henry says, he's back in my says, here um we have a brand if you, new if you want a hoover we have a brand we have brand new henry yeah, one henry. year yeah, I thought, right. yeah. That's my dude, do Henry the Hoover. From UK in boxes. Yes, yes, we will do deal. Sweet bird. Are there fees for Spellmore Institute? What are the fees for Spellmore Institute? Please get in touch with them you're, you're, regarding you're that. You're editing that episode I'm today. editing that one, yes. No. So I, I can't say just yet because they haven't given me that information yet. Keep your I, eyes open. So that please keep your eyes open. episode is coming. They are doing yeah. so many good things over there. Really yeah. excited for them. Yes, and they're also, they are on Instagram and they are, they've got their website, so it's called the Spellmore Institute. And they're in Pokwasi. 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 And yeah, there's some plots out there. It's nice, nice. It's a nice really nice, up nice. and coming area. Yeah, there are yeah. buildings happening all yeah. over that place. Yeah. Um, you're right <laughs> about the building materials increasing. Yeah. Don't we know it? Mm -hmm. Bobcat Jackson, where can you recommend the diaspora and diaspora to stay in Ghana when they first arrive that's affordable that doesn't require a one-year contract many thanks of this one-year contract long contract it's a thing out here um, I think the the smallest it depends on the landlord legally I don't think they're allowed to do over six months there was a ruling made a while back but you still get it everywhere um, again it's what you're going to feel comfortable living in um what where you're local to a school if you have children 
or if you're interested in nightlife, if you're going to be close enough for that. So it's up to you and what you'll be um, comfortable with. I can't give a recommendation. I don't have, um, I don't have anything for you right now. Yeah. Yeah, if someone said Airbnbs maybe. Yeah, yeah Airbnbs are great shout. I mean, there's um, quite good affordable ones actually, aren't there? There's yeah. quite a lot. Especially now that Christmas, the Christmas, December season's over, you'll have a lot available. What do you make of alternative building system and styles in terms of clay, hempcrete, wood, etc.? It's a really exciting time. Like I said, everyone is building. Um, I really wanted to do um, an episode on the guy that's reclaiming plastic and making these really dense bricks um, that are approved for building, they're approved material. Um, but he's just so busy, you can't get hold of him. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, I'm really excited about all the different building uh, materials that are coming onto the market. As long as they're safe and approved, um, go for it. Just make sure that there's buildings that you can go and see that have been up for more than a few years. Um, but there's a, so much exciting things going on over here. Someone wants to try a thatched roof, they've just said. Okay, uh -huh, yeah. that'd you be can cool. Still, you can still get that done here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you can still get that done. That's old technology, and I've seen it used in new ways out and about, especially at restaurants and bars and stuff. They really tend to go go in and, and experiment. You should go for it, Brown Coat. You've always definitely. wanted one, so definitely go for it. <laughs> um, Fix the Social says, please, do the British High Commission sponsor British citizens' education in Ghana? Not, Not that I've heard of, but you can contact through... The Diaspora Network, um, if you want to find uh, information yeah. like that, the Diaspora Network um, will be able to help you. Yeah, with, um, with Denta. Lady Denta. Yeah, so Lady Denta. Lady Denta. Thank you. And, um, she doesn't like it, but she, she's got the... the by the, force. And the they are actually there. The Diaspora Transition Network is actually there to support you guys with questions just like that. There are actually so many things and rights that we have and, you know, help that we have that we don't know about. So she put them together so that you can go straight to them. So the Diaspora Transition Network. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I think that is We're coming good. to the end of the questions. We are coming to the end of the questions. End of the questions, end of this live? Yes. So we're coming up to that. So we've been going for an hour and 40 minutes. So I think what we say now is if you've got any questions, throw them our way. We'll go for another five minutes or so. Yeah. Do you want more lives, guys? Is this something that you kind of like? We can do that. Um, coming up for the channel, we are going to be putting out more content on housing, on um, lands that are available, um, and business opportunities. Maybe we'll do that on a set day, maybe uh, on a Wednesday. I'm just putting it out there. How would you like these contents to be received? Yeah. We've heard you. You want some more interviews with... Um, people that have successfully made the change or made the journey and returned and um, we'll get that out to you guys and um what have we got coming in here but yeah i think Lady at Denver. this stage um we've been doing this channel for over a year now at this stage we're really interested in what you want more of and what you want like the direction you'd like to see it go yeah yeah lady denta mbe thank you very much yeah mm -hmm. i love it very love proud it. very proud yeah we are we really are her so yes, thank you again, guys. It so, looks like yeah, I don't know. In yeah. summary, it's um, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. I'm still definitely 100% um, happy with the choice that we've made as a family to relocate and return back to Ghana. Um, I deeply miss my friends and my loved ones in the UK. Uh, we'll be we'll be building as fast as possible to get you over here and um, enjoying Ghana with us. Yes. So guys, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in three, two, one. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the family. family. And we will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Instagram. <laughs> I'm making sure there's no more questions. No, there is no more questions. <laughs> there's always the last one. Oh, am I late for the live? <laughs> <laughs> bye, guys. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Have you pressed it? This one? Yeah, fix the motion. Yeah, you can